on the phone. It's a pleasure to welcome uh, back to the program independent journalist, but he writes for just about everyone. Um, and you can always find out what he's written by going to his Tumblr. David Dayan, welcome to the program, David. Thank you very much. That's uh, daviddayan.tumblr.com. Yes, or davedayan.com if it's easier for you. We will, uh, we will of course, um, uh, link to it on the blog at Majority. Uh, Dot FM. Let me just see if I can get that one right. Um, All right. Uh, David, so it now, yeah. and it sort of appears out of, maybe not so much out of nowhere, but uh, sort of Larry Summers seems to have shot to the top of the list of pre presumptive replacements for Brent Bernanke. Tell us uh, who else is on that list. Uh, it's really a two-man race at this point, or two-person race, I should say. Uh, Summers uh, was kind of waging a one-man campaign led by Larry Summers to become chairman of the Fed. He certainly made it known publicly in the media that he wanted this position. Uh, and the, the kind of conventional wisdom was that Janet Yellen, who is currently the vice chair, would be elevated to the chair position. Uh, Yellen has worked pretty much hand-in-hand -hand with Bernanke, particularly on uh, things like quantitative easing. Uh, she supports the program uh, of financial regulation that the Fed has been putting through. Uh, that includes stronger capital and leverage requirements on uh, the largest banks. Uh, and it was just seen that for continuity's sake that Janet Yellen would become the pick. Um, over, I think, the last week, maybe 72 hours even, uh, it's, it's certainly been brought to my attention by a lot of worried people uh, that Summers had vaulted to the lead here and was uh, on the verge of being selected. Um, it, it, as, as far as what I've heard, uh, the, the people inside the White House who have worked with Summers, who, who are colleagues of Summers, have been pitching uh, the president on choosing Summers uh, and and specifically not choosing Yellen uh, uh, in a very gender coded way and and this has been out there. Ezra Klein wrote something about the sort of sexist whisper campaign against Yellen, but uh, this has been confirmed to me that they're really talking about Yellen by saying that she's not strong enough to run the Fed, that she won't have the confidence of the financial markets which is all really a kind of a coded way of saying don't don't pick this woman in, even though she would be you know she would shatter a glass ceiling she would be the first uh, female federal reserve chair in in history uh and and choose Larry Summers instead and and the fact that Larry Summers has some unfortunate uh remarks about women in his background just just absolutely magnifies this that that he would uh, you'd be passing over the first woman for a historic position, uh, that there was this whisper campaign, and now you're going to pick Larry Summers to boot. So, so this is going to be a real problem, I think, uh, with the president's base, which is largely, uh, you know, has been appealing to women over the last year. Um, but, but that's kind of a sidelight for what right. this means sort of for the economy. All right. Well, let's, I mean, uh, tell us what the, 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 the two biggest, I guess, uh, and you write uh, preoccupations of the mm -hmm. Fed at the moment. What, what are they? Right. So I wrote in Salon that uh, really there is, are two things that the Fed is, is going to be concerned with, and that is when to ease up or whether to ease up on these uh, unconventional monetary measures that they've been doing, these quantitative easing programs, so mass purchases of, uh, in, in this case, mortgage-backed securities, uh, you could stretch that out and say, when are they going to raise the federal funds rate, interest rates, uh, where, and, and what are they basically going to do on the economy? Because really right now, I mean, the president's giving a speech today on the economy at Knox College in Illinois, uh, and none of it really matters because the House uh, is controlled by Republicans. Uh, fiscal policy is basically stuck, if not about to get actively worse with debt ceiling brinksmanship, and really the only position that matters for the economy over the next couple years and maybe longer is the Federal Reserve Chair, because that's really the only position that's going to have the free hand 
to take steps that could actually improve our economic performance. So, in so other words, that. in other words, we have no. We, there, we, our government is in a state right now where we have no uh, real ability to provide the economy much needed fiscal stimulus in terms of spending, and so we need to right. rely on monetary policy, which um, uh, which has the ability to basically create money uh, and stimulate mm -hmm. the economy in that way. Right, and 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 from the people that I've talked to that are concerned about the summer's pick he would be more willing to ease up on those breaks uh, and, and, and more concerned with sort of the inflation uh, targets, whether inflation gets out of control, than uh, the full employment mandate of the Federal Reserve, vis-a-vis uh, -vis Yellen, who is certainly an inflation ha uh, dove. She's someone who said a little inflation is a good thing. She uh, would be right in line with the program that we're seeing now at the Fed. Uh, so uh, on the economy, there's there's that point. All right, the and I, I just want to I, I want to just 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 make sure that people understand mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, that the 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 Fed has a dual mandate. That is to um, right. to deal with uh, to get uh, to to create employment essentially, uh, and to control inflation. That's th those are the basic Full employment the and price stability. Yes, and and they're failing both right now. I mean. Inflation is below even a modest 2% target, and it's been decelerating for the last two years. Uh, the uh, employment situation, unemployment is still uh, very high uh, relative to uh, times of a normal economy. And so measures need to be taken uh, by the Fed to, to remedy that. And, and they've, they've done some, some things to a degree but they, they have not taken the steps necessary. And when you look at what Yellen would do or what Summers would do, uh, you know, the choice is between, uh, it's somewhat unattractive choice, between maintain what's going on now or maybe go further, or uh, in the case of Summers, not maintain what, what, what is happening now and maybe pull back. Uh, that's more conjecture, but that is the position of the people I've been talking to that are concerned about this pick. And any rise in inflation is uh, perceived by people who um, own essentially loans uh, as problematic because it devalues the value of their loan. Correct. And, uh, and, and Correct. of course, uh, their, their money that they may have, which is a, a, a rather specific group of people in this country at this point. Um, right. And, right. Uh, and the assumption is that they would then, you know, rush their investments through. And, and, and but inflation also uh, could have a positive salutary effect on wages and 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 generally, uh, you know, keeping money tight is going to result in less uh, investment in the economy, uh, whereas keeping money loose, while it might raise inflation a bit, uh, is going to encourage more investment in the economy. And that's kind of the simplest way you can put it, and that's, that's what the Fed is trying to do. And you, and you saw this, that when interest rates went up, when they decided, uh, when, when Ben Bernanke said back in May, that they might taper their purchases of uh, their monetary stimulus actions, uh, interest rates shot up and, and, and people pulled back. And, and, and that was particularly true on mortgages, but also the regular interest rate on uh, Treasury bills. So uh, you, you can see how, you know, that kind of talk could get uh, the economy into uh, a bit more trouble. And if it's the only engine that we have available to us, uh, then you're going to want someone who, who isn't going to partake in that. And uh, that's, that's sort of the case for Yellen over, over summers on that point. And now, I think it's bigger a uh, bigger deal is financial regulation, so we can we can get into that. Yes, all right. That's the 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 second point you made is that uh, the Fed has responsibility for executing a lot of the financial regulations in Dodd Frank. Yes, and uh, so far, uh, it's it's certainly been mixed. Uh, I, I my understanding is that there are you know. At the staff level, the Fed, you still have a lot of Greenspan guys in there who kind of are allergic to regulation. But uh, under Daniel Tarullo, who's sort of the point person on financial regulation, there have been some modest victories, and, and they did tighten uh, capital requirements as sort of the, the what the loss absorption for banks, the ability to for, for them to cover their own mistakes rather than throwing them upon 
uh, the taxpayer. And so we've seen that over the last, you know, six months or so. Uh, Larry Summers, uh, there's probably no one who has a worse track record on financial regulation than Larry Summers in America, Democrat or Republican. I mean, this is the guy that threw Brooksley Bourne out of the room when she wanted to regulate derivatives, which was a major driver of the financial crisis. This is the guy who was Treasury Secretary, not just when uh, the Glass-Steagall Act was finally given a burial, but also uh, the one who oversaw the passage of the Commodity Futures Trading, uh, Commodity Futures Modernization Act, which uh, banned any regulation of derivatives, including credit default swaps, which are just bets on bets, uh, which magnified the crisis. This is the guy who in 2005 uh, at, the, at a Federal Reserve conference in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, uh, dismissed uh, the, the, the very prescient words of an economist named Raghuram Rajan, uh, who said that we're headed towards a financial crisis because of mortgage-backed securities. And uh, Summers called him a Luddite and said he was misinformed and, and there's, there's no problem. And, 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 of course, we saw just two years later what happened. So, you know, the track record for 15 years is absolutely horrible. And then during uh, the Dodd-Frank debate, as I understand it, Summers was against the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, or tried to undermine it at least. He was certainly against uh, tighter regulation on mortgage companies in terms of uh, instituting cram-down, which would have allowed bankruptcy judges to modify the terms of mortgages. Uh, he promised uh, Jeff Merkley, among others, that uh, he would uh, initiate a $75 billion program of mortgage relief, and he, you know, the, the administration really botched that. That was hamp, and they didn't do it. Um, there, there's a sense that Summers has failed upwards for the last 15 years, and uh, miraculously, it's about to happen again. Yeah, this is uh, this is pretty stunning, and there doesn't, I mean. It... What, what, where, you know, what, what moves the president on this? I mean, is there anything that, um, uh, how much outcry uh, is needed to make a difference? Or is it really just, I mean, you know, we're, we're talking about a position that is fairly, uh, I mean, the, the Fed is less opaque than it was, I guess, uh, five, uh, six years ago. Uh, but uh, the, the process is pretty, is not exactly transparent, and uh, this is no. a guy who will sit there for eight years, ten years, twelve years. I mean, uh, this is a uh, this is an, an extended position. Yeah, I mean, it's four year terms, but uh, they're often uh, you know added on, no matter who is uh, in the White House. You, you, you often see multiple terms for the Fed chair. Um, it, what, as far as what's going to move the president on this, I think uh, confirmability is probably one thing. Uh, you've already seen uh, Senator Merkley, for example, uh, uh, sort of uh, put out a tweet that said, uh, you know, very disconcerting to see Larry Summers uh, uh, as the potential choice here. It's not a done deal, but uh, it's pretty close, and he's definitely in the lead. And, uh, you know, what was expressed to me is that there's going to need to be a, a sustained campaign, uh, as there was when, during the transition, when Obama really did want to make Larry Summers the Treasury Secretary. Um, and there was enough of an outcry that uh, he ended up getting bounced inside the White House as the chair of the NAC. Uh, the NEC, I believe, or the Council of Economic Advisors, one or the other. Uh, I think National Economic Council, actually. Anyway, um, as sort of an in-house economic chair that wouldn't have to be confirmed. Uh, but, you know, that the fact that Summers only didn't get Treasury because there were a lot of people who screamed about it. And so uh, there may be a sense among uh, liberals that uh, the same kind of thing needs to happen again. And the difference is, is that there is no consolation prize for Summers here. Uh, it's, he either gets a Fed chair or he goes back to Harvard. Right, so, and uh, loses more of their, uh, more of their uh, endowment, I guess. <clears throat> in, yeah, in and loses more of the endowment, exactly. Uh, and, and so uh, the, the scenario 
which would, I mean, presumably the uh, the White House is going to uh, try and avoid nominating someone that they are aware will not uh, be confirmed. Um, how would how would he not be confirmed? In other words, would it be a handful of uh, of liberal senators? And then the Republicans who are happy to uh, deny President Obama a nominee. How how would that how right. what would that look like? If I the, think you go ahead. Yeah, I think you're describing it. I mean, you know, if you get a handful of liberal senators and say, "There's no way we're choosing Larry Summers uh, for this position," uh, and then Mitch McConnell gets in his head that he can, uh, you know, engineer a loss. For the president, which would be, you know, a nice thing for his reelection campaign, perhaps, uh, then you can see a, a, a scenario where Summers would get wouldn't even have a majority of the Senate. Uh, but you know, if that might not that might not happen. I mean, there 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 may be a, a, a serious contingent of Republicans who would be uh, supportive of. Summers, who has certainly favored deregulatory policies for the bulk of his his life as an economist and politician, or, or at least a political figure, so uh, it's 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 a bit unclear. I mean, I think that there's a perception that if you make this just sort of too hot to handle right away and shoot down this trial balloon, then there's a chance that that it never happens. Um, and and I think that the the issue of Yellen. And the issue of how this is being pitched is pretty crucial here. You know, there are 20 women in the U.S. Senate, and uh, uh, if 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 they perceive how that this went down the way it's being described to me that it's going down, uh, that could be significant. Uh, so, uh, what organization or which senators uh, should uh, listeners? If they're so inclined, uh, contact uh, to, to to weigh in on this. I mean, where where where's the well, best? Well, place certainly to... their own, but you know, I mean, members of the banking committee uh, obviously would be uh, people that you would want to talk to. Um, perhaps the only positive that would come out of this is to see Summers grilled by Elizabeth Warren at a Senate Banking Committee confirmation hearing. Uh, so so maybe uh, she would be a good uh, source. Uh, or someone to go to uh, to express concern about this. But uh, you know how it is. Typically, uh, uh, senators uh, listen to people from their home states. So uh, certainly talk to your home state senators. Uh, If uh, you think that the guy who has the most miserable track record in America on uh, financial regulation and the financial crisis uh, maybe shouldn't be in charge of a major financial regulatory position. That, to me, is what we call around here a slam dunk. David Dayen, uh, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it.